Good evening, Miss Alexander. Good evening, Gunther. Lovely evening, isn't it? Oh, yes, miss. Please, may I take your wrap? Oh, thank you, Gunther. If you don't mind my saying so, Miss Alexander, you're looking very lovely this evening. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, please, come this way. Mr. Whitney is expecting you. Yes, I've decided. Decided what? The portrait is lovely. But you're far lovelier in person, Raven. <laughs> oh, 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 we must not forget the purpose of this visit. I am simply here to collect my belongings. Yes, yes of course. Sir? Oh. Thank you, Gunther. Would you mind going upstairs and getting the ladies' belongings? Oh, very good, sir. Cheers. 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 Well, it, it shouldn't take Gunther too long to return. Since you've already told me there's very little I can consider mine here. The truth is, Raven, you could consider it all yours. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Whitney? You've only to say the word. And this house and everything in it would be yours, including me. <sighs> Why, Mr. Whitney, it's... But this is so unexpected. And after all the unkind things you've said to me, I was only trying to delay the inevitable. To deny my own feelings, but it's no use. I want you with me, Raven. Forever. <laughs> oh, you foolish little man. What? It's too late. It's much too late. Oh, don't, don't say that. No. You should have reached out for me when the time was right, but you didn't. And now... You may never have your chance. Oh, listen to me. I, I know I've been a fool, a stupid, childish idiot, but don't turn away from me now. We, we belong together. We've always belonged together. Take your hands off me. No, you're mine. Oh. I'm not letting you go. Oh. I'm never letting oh. you go. Don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Raven, dear. Raven, what is it? Oh... Oh, it was only a dream. Well, all I know is that I came into the room to wake you and you were talking in your sleep. It was because of him. Him? Oh, you were probably thinking about him because you have an appointment this morning. You do remember you have an appointment. Yes, yes, I remember. Well, after all, you were the one who asked me to come and wake you at this hour. That's right, because I have to get dressed very carefully. I want to look my best today. Oh, Raven, for heaven's sake. It's only an errand, not a rendezvous. Oh, I know exactly what it is. And you want to know something? I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I know the feeling. That was just wonderful. I mean, it was, it was like a, a preview of what might happen. Uh, oh, I don't mean that it'll be just that way. I'm not that silly. And what just did you see in this preview? Well, Sky wasn't nearly as unpleasant as I expected him to be. As a matter of fact, he was really nice. And I really think he's going to be, too, because when it comes right down to it, I think he knows what he's doing is wrong. I haven't seen any signs of contrition. Well, I just can't believe that he's going to take it all away from me. Not when we're face to face. And uh, that's why my face has to look absolutely perfect. Oh, there's just one big question. Don't tell me, let me guess. Whether or not he will let you keep a car, your furs, or your jewelry. No, it's what I should wear. I mean, I don't want to be too blatant, not at this hour in the morning. But I want to be a little daring, and maybe the hour will make it even more daring. If I can only remember what I was wearing in that dream. Raven, I wouldn't put too much faith in this dream of yours. No matter what you've heard, they are not forecasts of the future. That's not true. My dreams have come true before exactly the way I've dreamed them. Well, I suppose that can happen. After all, our dreams are reflections.
reflections of our hopes and anxieties. Don't start getting practical on me. I don't want to hear any cautionary speeches. I won't... Oh, I found it! What? <laughs> the dress. <laughs> I'm going to have him eating out of my hand. I suggest the olive. Now, I had it this morning, and it was truly awesome. No, Mitzi, I think we'll have some coffee and some orange juice. We're going to wait for the rest. Yeah, we're expecting Cliff. Oh, Cliff? Uh, Cliff hardly ever makes it in for breakfast. Well, he promised he'd meet us here this morning. How come? Like, why are you guys meeting so early? Because the earlier, the better. We need some legal advice, and we figured that Cliff would be the perfect person to talk to. Oh, boy. You guys in trouble? We could be. Okay, spill it. Well, we did kind of a crazy thing last night. We crashed a party at a foreign consulate. A consulate? What are you guys trying to do? Start an Sorry to wait, guys. I almost didn't make it here at all. Hey. It's... Hi. 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 Good morning. What happened, Cliff? Well, you know me in the morning, I'm like some programmed robot. <laughs> he is exactly like that. See? Well, what I mean was I sort of go on automatic pilot, you see. I woke up this morning and said, breakfast, two eggs, break them. And I thought, wait a minute, hold on, I got a phone call last night from Gavin. I'm supposed to meet him at Sid's for breakfast. And I don't want to waste the eggs, so I don't know what to do. And so I brought them along. Two eggs. Can you make them sunny side up? Oh, and the ham that's in there, uh, make it crisp, OK? No way. I am not leaving this table until I hear the rest of this story. What story? Oh, yeah, right. Well, what'd you guys do this time? Well, uh, Cliff, we tried to see the ambassador of the Republic of Eden. Yeah, but he was having a dinner party last night, so he couldn't see us. And then they told us that they're closing down the consulate for the rest of the summer, starting today. So you crashed the party? Is that what you guys did? Well, sort of. I mean, it's my fault, because it was my idea. Well, it's just as much my fault. I went along with it. Oh, no, no, wait, slow down, slow down, no, no, no. Why did you have to see this guy anyway? Did it have something to do with your kidnapping? Oh, no, no. I just, I thought I could talk to this guy. I thought maybe he'd know something about my painting. It's not really important why we did it, Cliff. The important thing is we got caught on consulate grounds. Mm. Oh, who caught you? A guy named Winks. He's the ambassador's assistant. Well, now the problem is Winks is threatening to call the police and turn us in. Yeah, and we figured, so if you could go as our counselor, then you could tell him that we're not criminals and get us all. Oh, I, no, no, I'm, not, I'm not too sure you two aren't criminals. You look sort of sneaky to me. Cliff, this is not a joke. This is a very serious problem. I mean, these guys... You guys could have started World War III okay, or something. Okay, but I'd appreciate it if nobody said anything to anybody about this. Oh, well, hey, don't worry. You want confidentiality? You got it. I better check up my international law to see what trespassing is. Um, you better tell me the whole story. Well, why don't you start with the punchline, Jody? That'll get Cliff's adrenaline going. Oh, uh, coffee would do better, please. Oh, you kidding me? I'm staying for the punchline. Well, the exciting thing about last night was not the break-in. It was the party's guest of honor. See, this party was given for Chad Sutherland. Suddenly, this dingy old place seems a bit brighter this morning. Looks the same to me. How are you, Jody? Did you have a nice birthday? Yes, I did. My birthday was wonderful. And um, I'm just a little nervous about having my portrait painted. Well, it's not like going to the dentist, believe me. Uh, if you'll have a seat right here, please. Okay. Chad, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to make a very good model. I mean, I'm usually too hyper to sit still. Well, we'll start out easy then, a half an hour or so. The main thing is to relax. You don't have to smile for now. Uh, let's see. 
three quarters, I think. So if you'll turn a little bit to your right and raise your head a little bit, that's it. I feel like a marionette. Lucky me, I get to pull the strings. Hey, Jim. Yeah, just a sec. Hey, what is this? You been up all night? No. I got up early. I ran in the park. And I have a visitor coming. Hope she won't be in your way. She? Who's the girl? I've talked about her before. Valerie. The photographer? Yeah. And that's what she's gonna do here. Take pictures of the studio? No, she's gonna take pictures of me. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah. I have to get some publicity going for the uh, Whitney Theater Company, even though it doesn't exist yet. And you? What about you? How come you're not at the easel yet? I figured you'd be here a long time ago. Well, uh, I had sort of a late night, too. Uh, I went to a dinner party that turned out to be a little more than I thought it would be. He hasn't been able to sit for you for a long time. No, that's uh, been a problem. Yeah, well, Jody's coming back, isn't she? You know, I don't really know, especially now. It's Val. Hi. Hi. Is my timing okay? It's great. Come on in. Okay. I'd like you to meet another aspiring artist. You must be Chad Sutherland. Jim's talked about you. And you must be Val. I feel we've met. <laughs> he talks about you all the time. She's pretty, isn't she? Uh huh. Jim's stuff. <laughs> so, this is a working assignment, isn't it? Yes. And I'm going to let you two get to work. Um, I'm going to go out and get some breakfast. Oh, well, Chad, you don't have to go. You won't be in the way. Uh, no, I've already started the day late, so a little bit later won't make any difference. Uh, it was nice to finally meet you, Val. I'm sure I'll see you again. I'm sure you will. Hey, Jim, I'll see you later, huh? Yeah, Chad. And don't forget to watch the birdie. <sighs> well? Hi. You ready? Well, let me just set up here. You know, I was thinking, I think we should concentrate on headshots. It's such a nice head. Thanks. I think I'll concentrate on a close-up. Okay, okay, come on. Business before pleasure. I gotta concentrate, Dederickson. Let me see. Let me get a light reading. I appreciate you coming over here. I know I could have gone over to your place. No, actually, it works out better this way. Because I'm doing some fashion shots later this morning, and I wouldn't want to overwhelm you with beautiful girls. What? Listen, I can handle it. Do you need any help this afternoon? <laughs> no, I don't, thank you. Will you stand over here for me? You know, the, the natural light coming in the window, it looks really nice. Listen. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Hold on. I don't Stay even there. know why I'm doing all this publicity. I mean, all I'm going to get is a bunch of letters from unemployed actors. Well, but you don't need people. I mean, you don't have very many of your old company left. Yeah, that's true. Oh, wait. I'll try this. Here, shh, put your foot up on that chair. And just lean into me. Look relaxed. Okay. Yeah, I do need people. I need to start over. It's going to be hard. This is ridiculous. I don't, I don't know what to do here. No, you look fine. Just talk to me. Um, tell me about Gavin. Is he going to direct for you? Yeah. Yeah, if I can talk him into it. And I also have a set designer. Yeah? Who's that? Chad. You just met him. He's never done it before, but at least he'll be cheap, you know. There's also somebody else I'd like to work with. Yeah? Yeah. Who's that? Lady behind the camera. <sighs> mm, come on, Jim. Really? I've told you. I don't have any ambitions in that area, and I'd never be good enough anyway. It's okay, baby. I make you a star. <sighs> you won't ever give up, will you? No. Why should I? Will you have dinner with me tonight? Oh, Jim, I don't think I can tonight. Uh, why? I already have a date. Uh... And I can guess with who. Yeah, you probably can. It's Sky. Ted.
got his hand cuffed, and then he was going to call the police, and then Chad Sutherland walks in in a white suit and tells him to let us go. What, what, what was Chad Sutherland doing there? It was his party. See, Chad is the Prince Regent of Eden. Is that like the king? Well, no, Prince is like second in line. Oh, my gosh, it's the phone. Well, you'd better answer it, Vince. Why is it working? Hello, this is Sid. I'm Mitzi. Who are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's here. Um, hold on. Jody, hmm? it's for you. Oh, oh, it's, uh, not the cops, is it? Uh, well, no, I didn't say I'm out. I don't think it's a cop. I mean, he sounded nice. Better not let Calvin hear you say that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hello? Oh, it's you. Jody, I, uh... I tried to reach you at home first, and your sister told me you were at Sid's. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I'm here with Gavin. I see. Um, listen, I, I thought I had to get together and talk with you. Uh, with both of you, as a matter of fact, about last night. Uh, would you mind if I joined you? No, Chad, that'll be fine. Great. Uh, I'll be there as soon as I can. A very big, empty space. Well, maybe you ought to put your own portrait up there, Mr. Whitney. <laughs> it's a thought, but uh, frankly, I think there's something vulgar about putting up your own portrait. Mm. Well, it didn't seem to bother that lady none. Huh? My point, exactly. There's the lady now. I'll let her in. Hi, Gilder. Lovely morning, isn't it? Well, it's OK if you like hot, sticky weather. Oh, will you hurry up and come in? You're letting all the air conditioning out. Gunther, you're supposed to show me in. He's right over there. Good morning. We were just discussing your portrait. So you really did take it down? We were wondering what to put in its place. I was thinking of buying something really fine, like uh, a Degas or perhaps a Renoir. I'm partial to the Impressionists. But you didn't come to give me decorating advice, did you? No, I didn't. You came for this, I believe. It's an inventory, in good order, divided into three categories. Those items which are definitely yours, those which are paid for with my money, and those which are still in question. It's a rather long list. Gunther will bring down those items which aren't in question. Go ahead, Gunther. Uh, yes, Mr. Whitney. And we can discuss those questionable items. Oh, for heaven's sake, do you have to act so businesslike? This is business, isn't it? No, it isn't. It's my life. You, you make me feel like some petty thief. Oh, I wouldn't say there was anything petty about you, Raven. Will you look at this list? I mean, what are you trying to do? Strip me of everything I own? You, you have my, my clothes, my shoes, my coats, my hats? I can corroborate everything on that list with sales slips from the stores which sold them to you or to your late husband. So just what am I supposed to have left? Oh, come on. Is that all? Apparently everything in it was yours before the marriage. Oh, excuse me, would you like some coffee? Gunther, get us some coffee. I almost forgot my manners. You are forgetting a lot more than that. This is not all I had left. I had a lot more than this. You, you failed to realize that I had a lot of my own money before I got married. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm merely keeping what belongs to me, Raven. And I'm letting you have something a lot more precious than anything on that list. Your freedom. Freedom to what? Walk around naked? No. No, this isn't business, is it? This is revenge. This is justice, Raven. Oh, yeah? Well, this is what I think of you are justice. Give me that. No. Give me that! Do you ever have a nightmare that lasted for years? You must like to live in some sub-basement of hell. Do you even expect me to forgive and forget and make sweet offerings of charity? When all I really want to do is put my hands around that lovely white throat and squeeze and squeeze. All right, then do it. Come on. Kill me. Well, do it, you big coward! You want me, don't you? You think so? Because of one kiss? I can tell a lot from one kiss. <laughs> 
No wonder you were the perfect match for Jeff Brown. You're as conceited as he was. You want me. You just don't want to admit it. You're afraid of me. I can't tolerate hysteria, Raven. That's why I kissed you. Oh, is that right? It worked, didn't it? Oh, that's where that is. I was wondering. I understand this cost more than $200,000. That is my engagement ring. I don't care what it is. It was my money that paid for it, wasn't it? Is <sighs> your coffee, miss? And don't forget your things, Raven. 